I tend to read the play quite a few times. I'd probably read it three times, sort of thinking through things before I meet with the director. So I um, like to just read it and imagine things that I'm excited by and um, perhaps then read it thinking about the set and perhaps then read it thinking through costume ideas. But I would um, start the process by doing lots and lots of research. So I'd look at loads and loads of images, photographs, things that I think of when I read the play. And look, I tend to look a lot at art installations and um, documentary photography and things like that. So I would sort of do a big magpie phase of kind of gathering lots of imagery together. And then I'd start working with the director um, where we'd sort of work through the play and where we want it to go, but trying to keep as free as possible because very quickly when I start designing, I have to start thinking about budget and how much things cost. So I like to try and keep as free from that as possible. So I'd try and keep imaginative for as long as I can. I'm just... No exercise! I'm still a soldier! No exercise! <laughs> What's the problem? The really exciting thing about the first time we did it was that we performed it in a school and one of the schools we performed at was Bradley Manning School, Chelsea Manning School. So I felt in some ways I already had a whole set, we had a whole context for the play that already existed and that however we took the audience into that journey and set up how we would perform the play, that became what the design would be. And for me there was this very, very strong image of if you have a, an American soldier with a machine gun and you put them in a school, you already have like a hugely tense, strong image because you're looking at something which has two meanings. Um, and we talked, John and I, a lot about how we wanted the audience to feel because Chelsea Manning had undergone this period of terrible isolation in prison and was still imprisoned at the time. Um, we wanted the audience to kind of go on a journey of understanding what that is. So when you first come into the space, there was a huge pile of chairs and soldiers guarding it and they'd give you a chair and you'd have to go and sit on your own. We also ended up wanting to have a strong sense of surveillance and because we were live streaming the play, um, we built these kind of flagpoles or towers that we could construct and build up, which had lighting and sound elements, speakers and um, cameras on them so that kind of there was a sense of surveillance and we also used a lot of old computer monitors. How's things at home? I made a sort of school plastic chair that had an American flag sprayed into it and that felt like a really good way of kind of exploring isolation. We also had this idea of using a giant tarpaulin which at the beginning of the play Chelsea Manning's underneath it and emerges from it. And these were just really, really simple elements that we used. We also had some duvets that were <laughs> American flag one side and camouflage the other, and we used those as kind of like flipping around beds or not or wherever we needed. So we just used these really minimal elements. The passwords to every computer are on sticky notes pressed onto monitors. Why has no one leaked anything? On the way into the performance space, the audience, once they came into the school itself, there was a sort of soundscape and um, you walked along an empty corridor. So it was interesting that the play was in the summer and not during term time, so the school was very empty and tidy and sort of austere. Um, and we sort of deliberately didn't do any visual interventions in any of these rooms. We left them very simple and there would be kind of maybe one or two soldiers on the way just in a classroom or sat on a table and that gave you this kind of quite sinister build-up feeling so it's really good to think about how your audience come into the space how they are seated how they are looking what direction they're looking in I think if you're not in a theatre context then immediately you have these myriad of choices of how you would watch the play round of applause for Bradley I have worked a lot with Tim Price and he writes a lot of scenes which often need different costumes. So this was quite a challenge because we had to go from full American soldier kit into school uniform like that straight away. So we had to find a way where it was okay to kind of blur these two costumes but it involved endless putting on and taking off of um, both soldier uniforms 
and school uniforms. But it was quite interesting lining up a load of school kids and turning them into soldiers. That's kind of quite resonant and strong in itself. We realised we would need a certain number of props and costumes as we went through the process of making the play. And so we ended up thinking, well, where do we put the props? We don't really want to have tables of props. We don't really want to do anything overtly theatrical. So we ended up assigning each of the characters a locker. And we, once we'd laid out the chairs for the audience to sit on, we had these kind of four aisles in either end where there were two sets of lockers for each. So they could have all their school uniform or all their kit or all their props, guns, whatever, all just went into a locker. So the digital element of Bradley Manning was um, exciting and very much part of the design process itself. So we knew that we had to have quite good camera positions because we were going to live stream the show. And um, also got I got part of the sort of um, conversations about what the website would look like and the page. And I used some of the graphics in some ways in that I had hazard yellow and black tape and that all of the um, website had yellow and black on it so it's kind of there were a couple of little links between the, the worlds. So one thing we really had to consider and always is a really huge element of designing a set is can the audience see everything and what are they experiencing and are they seeing enough? So we really wanted to do this thing and we debated it endlessly because it became quite complicated, the fact that we had a huge stack of chairs, we wanted each audience member to sit on their own, not in a row, and they had to take their chair and put it into position. So we worked out a lot of different kinds of seating plan options because it was debatable whether, down to health and safety, whether a person can sit on their own on a free chair. And then if we needed to evacuate, it would mean da da da. So a huge aspect of my job, more than where characters stand or anything like that, is how the audience are. Can they see? Are they comfortable? What's their experience? What's their emotional journey through the play? If I want to help people make the world a better place, I can't think of anywhere better than the US Army. I don't want you to join the Army. I don't have a choice, miss.